Today on The Joy of Editing, we're going to take a look at the brand new Nick Collection 7. This will be a first look video. There's a lot of really nice new features in this new Nick Collection. I think you're going to enjoy it. Let's check it out. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Thanks for joining me today. Today, we will get a look at the new Nick Collection 7. There's a lot of really nice new features in it. I mean, this is a really good update in my opinion, but let's check it out. By the way, if you'd like to purchase the new Nick Collection 7 or try a free trial to check it out to see if it's something you could use, I'll have an affiliate link in the description below this video for you. Now, to use the Nick Collection, you could come up here to Filter, click on Filter, and find Nick Collection 7 and choose any one of the filters here. That's not the way I like to use it. I'll show you the way I like to use it. I like to come over to File and then come down to Automate, and you're going to find the Nick Collection 7 Pellet. Click on that, and it opens up the pellet because you get a lot more features inside of this pellet. You can do a lot more with it. I'm not going to go deep into the weeds today, but we're just going to get a first look. But here is the pellet. Now, we can launch any one of the filters from here. One of my favorite filters in the Nick Collection is Nick Color Effects. I'm going to click on that and we'll go ahead and launch it. And here we are inside of Color Effects. Now, any one of the Nick Collection filters could be used as smart objects. You don't need to turn the layer into a smart object before sending it into any of the Nick Collection products. And that's really cool. If I want to output this as a smart object, I'll just click this box right here little check mark there. When this outputs back into Photoshop, it will be a smart object. And that means that you could bring that back into color effects and make some readjustments if needed. What you're seeing right now is color effects from the Nick Collection 6. And I'm showing you this because I want to show you a difference here. You'll notice to the right of the interface over here, DxO filters, clear view, grain, and HSL. In Nick Collection 7, you're not going to see these here anymore, but we still have the filters. They've just moved them over to filters over here. So now what we can do is have multiple instances of these filters, especially like with HSL or Clearview. This is going to be a very nice feature, so we can locally add those adjustments. Here, you can just do global adjustments, but now we can do local adjustments, and that's a nice new feature. And you'll also notice, if you look at the filters over here, the different categories here, they revamped this, they made this much nicer, and we're gonna see that here in a second. Now, let's look up here at categories. Now, we had categories before. See, we have all these different categories, but now you could favor the category. For instance, contrast, if I click on the star, you'll notice how it will rise up. And these will be in alphabetical order. C contrast comes after B for basic adjustments, right? And Vivesa is right there. This is also something new. You can do Vivesa adjustments right here and color effects. This is a big new feature. We'll get to that in a little bit. Anytime you favorite one of the categories, it will rise to the top of the list. So if I uh, unfavorite contrast, you'll notice it'll go back right there. So that's a new feature, and I like this. If you click the plus... You can create a new category, or from here you can manage your workspace. But if you click on create a new category, name it whatever you want. You can make it a favorite and click create. I'm just going to click cancel. Do you see this category here, Vivesa? If I click on it, there are the Vivesa adjustments right here in color effects. Now, I made this category myself, and I placed these filters inside of that category so I could grab them really quickly. So that's a nice feature. I'm going to go back and click on all Nick filters right there. Now we have them all. Anytime you see a star, that's going to be a favorite. Now you notice these filters here, filter by favorites. If I click on favorites, it just shows all of my favorite filters because there's so many filters inside of color effects. We need this kind of organization. If I click favorites again and shut off favorites, now we see all of the Nick filters here. So that's pretty cool. If you need filters for architecture, click right here. Here's your architecture filters or contrast, whatever you need. I'm just going to click on all Nick again. Now remember, to make any filter a favorite filter, just click on the little star to the left of the filter name and that becomes a favorite. Now here's another new feature, search a preset. Now, if you're like me, I'm looking for glamour, glow, or whatever, you gotta go through this list of filters and they are in alphabetical order. 
But if you want to find contrast filters, you can just click here and type in C-O-N-T-R-A-S-D, contrast. And there's all your contrast filters. Or if you're looking for Glamour Glow, Glam, just type Glam and there's Glamour Glow. Click the plus, add it to the filter stack over here. So that's pretty cool. I love this ability now to search our filters right here. That is exceptional. I'm so glad they added this feature. If you think this is a great new feature, let me know in the comments section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Now, as I said, they added HSL, clear view, and grain over to the filters over here. So you can use multiple instances and then use things like control points or control lines with them. For instance, let me come up here and type in HSL. HSL, and here's the HSL filter. I'll click the plus and add the HSL filter. And let's say I want to work with the blues in the sky. So I could click on this picker and click the blue in the sky like this. And now you'll notice over here on this color bar right across here, these top handles, you can widen that color range by dragging this to the left or into the right to make it more narrow. Same with this handle. We could drag it to the right or into the left. And this is the feathering. We could encompass a little more color and blend that a little bit better with feathering. And then I could come here and adjust my saturation like this, give it a little bit more blue. Now say for instance, if blue was getting into the rest of the image and I didn't want that, well, I could come here, click on a control point and make this a local adjustment. Now let me show you something new here. If I click right here, you see my circle, but this is something new. What we can do is drag these circles like this and I can widen this out and make it more oval shape. And then if I hover out over the circle right here, you see the little curve with the arrows. I can go and adjust it, you know, change the angle of it. So that's really cool. I could drag it across like so and just get the sky in. And then I could come here and make this a little bit more narrow. This is a mask button right here. If you click this button, you can see the mask and see the area that I'm encompassing. So I can take this and bring this up like this. Maybe feather that a little bit more. Now here's a little tip for you. You see luminance and chrominance. If you wanted to encompass everything in this area right here, you could take this luminance slider and drag it the whole way into the left. And you can take the chrominance slider and take it the whole way into the left. And now that becomes solid white. That means that whole sky area is selected. And now I'll click this button again to see the image back. By the way, you can use a shortcut of M. If you type your M key, you can see your mask and type your M key again. And now you go back to the image view. So now I can retweak my adjustment here. Give it more blue, give it less blue maybe change the hue, whatever you want. And there's a uniformity slider. I'm not going to get into all this because I've had videos before where I explained this stuff. And again, I don't want to get into the weeds, but I'm going to show you these new features. But if I wanted to now, I could come and come to the HSL and add another one. We couldn't do this before. We could only do a global adjustment, but now we can do local adjustments and add as many of these HSL filters as we want. And now, for instance, I can click on the picker again, and I'll click on this sand color. And now maybe I'll adjust the saturation a little bit on that, make it a little more saturated like that. And again, if it's getting into my water and I don't want that, well, I could come and if I hover over this control point, it says add control point, hold option to add neutral. So if I come out here, I'm going to click this button, come out here, hold my option key down. You see that becomes a negative. And so now that's a negative control point. So I could go ahead and reshape this you know, change the angle, you get the drift and widen this out. And now I don't have that HSL in the water. I only have it here in the sand. So let me go ahead and increase that saturation a little bit more. You see that? Isn't that cool? So we can add as many HSL filters as we want. We can add as many clear view filters as we want. To clear out the search area, just click the X. And now let's click on my Vivesa category. And let's do something here. Let's say I want to adjust this sand right in here. I want to make it darker. I want to show you another new local adjustment we can use, and you're going to love this. Now, the Vivesa filters are global adjustments, selective tone, and white balance. I'm going to click on global adjustments. I'll click the plus, and it adds it over to the filter stack over here. And now you see my global adjustments. Now, we could turn these into local adjustments, and I'll show you, but we could globally adjust the entire image right here brightness, contrast, saturation, so on and so forth. By the way, you can also rearrange these filters. If you click and drag like this, you see that you can move it into a different position. 
So that's a really nice feature. To turn this global adjustment into a local adjustment, I'll use a new tool. And that's this guy right here. Add control polygon. Hold option to add neutral. I'm just going to add one. I'm going to click this button right here. And let's say I want to make this area darker. So I can click drag just like the polygonal lasso tool in Photoshop. This is really, really cool. And it has feathering so you can feather this in. I'm just going to go a little fast here, but take your time. You know what I mean? You want to get a decent adjustment here or decent selection, I should say. So let's just go like this, like that. And now I can come outside of here and come up here and maybe click here and click here to close this off. Now I have it, right? Remember my little trick. If I just want to darken this whole area and I don't want to work with luminosity or chrominess, I have other videos showing you how that works. I'm going to take this luminous slider, drag the whole way to the left. I'm going to take the chrominous slider, drag it the whole way into the left. And now if I type my M key, you can see I've selected that whole area. And here's feathering here. You see this? You can feather out into the image with this as well. So this is really cool. So I can have a nice feathered edge on there like that. I'll type my M key again to get back to image view. And now with the brightness slider, I'll drag it to the left. See how I can just darken that sand up. And now it's a little bit more saturated than I'd like it. So I could take the saturation, pull back on the saturation a little bit. Okay, so I've darkened up my sand, which makes a nice little um, change between dark to light. I'm going to go ahead and add another global adjustment. So I'll click the plus. What I want to do is this water here. I just want to bring it out a little bit. So I'm going to grab another polygon selection tool. I'll click this button and I'll just click, drag, click, drag, click, and just go the whole way around this thing and select it. I just want to bring that water up, make it a little bit lighter. And also I want to bring out some structure in that water just to Give it a little bit of a pop. So I'm just going to continue to come around here like this. And we'll just close it off here. And now for this polygon, I'll click this picker right here. And what I want to do is go over one of the lighter areas in the water, maybe like right there. And let's turn the mask on by clicking this button. And now let me adjust the luminous. I'll drag this to the right just so I really select that water just like that. You see? And now I'll click the mask button again. We'll see our image again. And now I'll lighten that water up a little bit to maybe right here, 14%. And give it a little structure. So I'll take this to the right, to right there, 44%. And now you can see we have that little bit of pop. I'll shut this off by unchecking global adjustment. There's before and there's after. And I like it. Now, as far as local adjustments are concerned, I have one more to show you. And that is this one right here luminosity masks and this is big this time i'll add glamour glow so i'm going to come up to search this is the way i like to do it i'll just type in g-l-a-m and there's glamour glow i'll click the plus to add glamour glow and let's take the glow and i'll take it up a good bit here something like this now let's say i only want to bring this glamour glow to darker tones so i can use this luminosity mask so i'll click on this button and then what you do with the crosshatch there, you see it, you just hover over a tone. Like I'm going to pick a dark tone, like right here. I'll click right there. And there you can see there's that luminosity mask. Now you can drag these handles and widen this out. Like I can take this handle and drag it to the right a little bit. Take this handle and drag it to the left. And then we can feather it by adjusting these handles on the bottom here, just to feather that out a little bit and get it just the way that you like it. And now we could click on the mask button right here to see what it looks like. These are the areas I'm targeting in the light. Everything that's light will be getting targeted. You see that? It's a luminosity mask, and it's pretty cool. And now if I click this button again, we can see the image back. Now if I come up here to Glamour Glow, click this to uncheck it, we can see there's the before and here is the after. But it's only going to the dark tones. Pretty cool. Now, something else you can do is you can click on any one of these zone buttons and pick a zone from zone zero, which would be really black blacks up to zone 10, which would be really white whites. So you have all these zones. You can click on any one of these buttons and you can adjust these handles. If you'd like to see some videos on this kind of stuff, working with luminosity masks in uh, Nick Collection 7, let me know in the comments section below. There's one more really big feature coming up, but before I do that, let me click X on the search here to get back to the filters, and let's click All Nick. By the way, you got tons of presets that you can work with, all of the different Nick 
uh, presets here. So I didn't get into that because I'll be honest with you, I don't really use presets, but I just want you to know they are there. Now for the big feature. But wait, hold the presses. I forgot to tell you about Quick Export. I'm not going to spend any time here, but there's a Quick Export button right here. If you click it, you could send this as a JPEG or a TIFF back to the original folder just to save off a copy where you were at. Or you could pick your own special folder that you wanted to go to. But I'll save that for another video. But I want to get to Switch 2 right now. This is a really great feature, and I think you'll love it. I'll click on switch to and notice we can switch to any one of these filters in the Nick Collection 7. Isn't that cool? For instance, I could go to analog effects if I want to. I could go to Vivesa, Define, anything, you name it. And I made this a smart object. So those smart objects for the different filters will be in layers inside of Photoshop when I'm done. Let me just for the heck of it, uh, we could use any of these. Let me click on Nick seven silver effects and we'll launch it now here we are inside of silver effects pretty cool we came from color effects now we're in silver effects now let me just add a preset i'll click this high contrast preset right here not saying i like this but just for the sake of the tutorial there it is now if i want to i can click apply send this back into photoshop or i could click switch to and now maybe go to nick analog effects i'll click on that and then in a few seconds, we'll be in analog effects. And here we are. Now I could use a preset or I could click on camera kit and maybe add a frame to this. I'll click on frames and I don't want that frame. That's film strip. Let me click on white and let me just add like a frame like this. Let's say I like that frame. Not saying I do, but let's say I do. And now at this point, I'll click apply and that'll send us back into Photoshop. And I'll show you something interesting once we get in Photoshop. And here we are in Photoshop. Remember, I made the original color effects a smart object. So now I have a color effects smart object, a silver effects smart object, and an analog effects smart object. So I can go and readjust any one of these Nick Collection filters if I want to. So that's pretty amazing, wouldn't you say? But this is the new Nick Collection 7. I think you need to give it a try. At least get a uh, free trial. Click on my affiliate link in the description below. If you purchase it, I make a small commission. And this, this helps support my channel. When you do that, I really appreciate it. Now today, this was just the first look. And, you know, I wasn't doing any serious editing here. If you'd like to see some more advanced editing tutorials with the new Nick Collection 7, let me know in the comments section below. Well, there it is, everyone, a first look at Nick Collection 7. This is a great update for the Nick Collection. Man, I'm really impressed by this update. I think it's a really big one. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Click all so that you receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.